Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to talk about a complex exponential equation. We kind of stack the e's here to make it more interesting because if I just gave you e to the power z equals i, which we can also talk about, that would be fairly easy, right? Don't you think? If you're familiar with complex numbers, this should still be easy for you. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, my first channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Okay? Maybe you came from there and you already know. Please let us know in the comment section what you think. And if you don't understand something or if you have any questions, always ask because someone will answer them, if not me. So, we have a really interesting exponential equation. Z is a complex number, and to keep a long story short, a complex number can be written as A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers, and I is the square root of negative one, which means I squared can be written as negative one, which is huge. Don't ever forget that, okay? Well, in this case, if I replace Z with A plus BI, is that gonna help me? I doubt it, that could work, but I'm gonna use a totally different method. I'm not going to replace z with a plus bi, but instead, I'm going to use the polar form thanks to Euler, because Euler is the best, in my opinion, at least. And let me know what you think. We're going to be able to have exponentials on both sides. That's the beauty of exponents. So, how do you write e in polar form? I mean i, that's what I meant. To write i in the polar form, we need to consider the coordinate plane, which is also called the argon plane. So i is 0 plus 1 i. So it's basically represented by the point 0, 1 on the coordinate plane, which is basically right here. So this is i. And notice that i is actually like one rotated pi over 2 radians in the counterclockwise direction, which is the positive direction. Of course, that means it also makes an angle with the real axis or the with the positive x axis, which is pi over two radians. That comes from rotation, right? So any complex number that has a modulus r and an argument theta can be written as r times e to the i theta. r is the modulus or it's also called the absolute value, which is given by the distance from zero. For i, it will be one because it's one unit away from zero and the theta would be pi over 2. So we can basically write i as e to the power i times pi over 2. But pi over 2 is not the only way to write it. You know why? Because if you just add 2 pi to this, you're going to get to the same point. Or if you subtract 2 pi from it, you're going to get to the same point. You can do this multiple times, which means you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. Uh-oh, number line is gone, so let's go ahead and put it back. So we're allowed to add 2 pi n, which is multiples of 2 pi to this. But in this case, n needs to be an integer. Z for Zalen, right? I think it comes from German. Okay. So what do you do with this? Well, you have e's on both sides, so you can ln both sides, bring down the exponents, in other words, you get e to the z, we still have an exponent because the exponent is another exponential. So we have two levels we have to deal with, i times pi over two plus two pi. And I have a feeling I've done this problem before, I hope not. If I did, hopefully this time it's a little different. Great, so now we have another exponential, guess that what that means? We need to write this in polar form again, but that's just something multiplied by i. Think about it this way. Maybe this is like two i, three i, four i. How do you guarantee it's positive? I can't depending on the value of n. But I can make some assumptions, show you a basic case, and hopefully you can extrapolate to other cases. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume that n is equal to 0. And guess what? As a bonus, I can also look at the case n equals 1, which is not going to be very different, by the way. But if n is equal to 0, e to the z becomes i times pi over 2, which is super duper simple. Now, how do we write the right-hand side? Well, it's kind of like something multiplied by i. So we're still on the same plane, on the same coordinate system, like on the imaginary axis, but 
is just longer. The modulus is going to be a little bigger. Which, how many times? Pi over 2 times. Because this is i times pi over 2. If you have i times 1, it's 1 unit away. So the modulus here is just going to be pi over 2. Does that make sense? If you're not convinced, go ahead and take the absolute value of i pi over 2. And you're going to realize this is the same thing as the absolute value of i times the absolute value of pi over 2. But this is 1 and this is a real number which is positive. So its absolute value is itself. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And now we are ready to write this as r times e to the power i theta. But guess what? The argument is pi over 2 again. But if you wanted to not keep it too simple, you're, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, but let's, this time let's just use 2 pi k because we already used n. Now, what am I going to do with this information? Let's go ahead and take a look. Let me copy that here. e to the z equals pi over 2 times e to the power i and then another pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. If you natural log both sides, ln, right? You're going to get z from here. z is going to be ln pi over 2, which is a real ln, by the way, plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And again, for simplicity's sake, or just wanted to keep it a little simpler, you can assume k equals 0. At least that gives you one of the solutions. You're going to get ln pi over 2 plus i times pi over 2. So it's kind of like has the same type of flavor like i pi over 2 but it also has the natural log of pi over 2 which is 1.5 something right think about it this way pi is not 180 sometimes people say and i heard it from many students too like pi is 180 right no pi is about 3.14 but pi radians is 180 degrees make sense be careful about that distinction because it could easily mess you Okay, so for k equals 0, this is the solution. For k equals 1, uh, you'll get a different solution, and you can just continue. And I told you that I was going to, you know, look at the case where n is equal to 1. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see if we get something different. If n is equal to 1, we're going to get e to the z equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi, and that would give you 5 pi over 2. Awesome. And what does that mean? Great. So we're going to natural log both sides, right? Are we? Well, before we do that, maybe we should consider writing this in polar form. 5 pi over 2 times e to the power i pi over 2. Again, I can add 2 pi k if you want to leave it alone. You can. But now we have the following. And when we natural log both sides, you know what the difference is going to be? Instead of getting ln pi over 2, you're going to get ln 5 pi over 2. And guess what? The imaginary part is going to be unchanged. Of course, uh, depending on the value of k, it could be different, but it's pretty much the same thing. Make sense? So that's pretty much it because this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye-bye.